Hey, everyone. fighting vampires guys is just I feel like vampires are just getting in everything and it was a, it's a bit much it doesn't really need to happen um, so in this um, why it's so low is because it's not a Falcon book it's it's just not it doesn't center on Falcon it centers more on blade who isn't even on the cover um, Misty Knight is more of a POV character, and Falcon's just, you know, fighting vampires off to the side. And then the real hero is Blade. Um, so yeah. So last issue of Falcon. Um, not really sad to see it go. It, it wasn't, wasn't great. It wasn't a great run. Um, but yeah. Last issue of Falcon. You know, what are you gonna do? Um... Next I'm going to talk about Despicable Deadpool issue 293. I know this came out a couple months ago, but and he just picked it up and you know it was all right. Um, it's not the best issue so far, but it's definitely not the worst as well. Um, I feel like Jerry Duggan has really taken a slump with Deadpool. Um, first off, the f the run from just after Secret Wars, where they were trying to turn him into a hero, that was good. Like, Jerry Duggan knows how to write Deadpool, and he knows how to do Deadpool well. I just hope that he gets better before before the issue 300. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just playing catch up with Deadpool at the moment. And, you know, this is, this is a bit disappointing. The art in this does... It looks nice, don't get me wrong. It's not bad art by any means. It's just not. It's just a bit too. It it looks a bit more like a manga than a comic book, and it like again, it's not bad art. It just doesn't fit the tone of the story. Another thing that I don't like is that they've called it Despicable Deadpool, and. They've, they're basically just trying all their best to make it as, to make it, uh, to make Deadpool as sympathetic as possible, which kind of, you know, if you're going to call it Despicable Deadpool, then live up to the title. Next comic I'm going to talk about is Cable, number 154. This was, this was good, but... The rest of the the rest of the story arc that this like concludes is um, is a lot better than this actually. Um, it just feels like a villain that's been hyped up so much, Gideon. Um, it just feels like he's he goes out a bit too quickly. Uh, you know, there's the fights a couple of pages, and then he gets his head chopped off by Blink. Who was only introduced like what two issues ago? It's like the thing. The book's called Cable. Have Cable be the guy to beat the villain, you know. Um, the art, as always, looks astoundingly good by John Malin. The the art kind of saves the book actually. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. 
it just it just feels like he goes down a bit too easy. Like the villain gets beaten, there's still another half of the book to go. It's not even as if it's like a, a maxi sized issue. So yeah. Um it was alright, it's just the rest of the arc was so good, this just felt a bit like a disappointment of a way to end it off. Um, can't say the same for um, Cable number 155 though. This was really good. I really enjoyed this. The art, it's a different creative team. The, the story is really good. The art... The artist, um, German Peralta, does a lot better when he's when he's drawing an action sequence, but when he's drawing just like the talking heads, it it does seem very static and motionless. And I mean, uh, like that there, like just having the small the small panel of someone walking like they they do they do it here with um with hope and then they and then they basically redo the same panel a couple pages later with cable and it just it's just a bit lazy but when it gets into the action that's when it starts to you know get like get good again but the, art, the art's not bad it's just better in the action sequences than it is when it's like just talking heads but yeah the story is basically Cable trying to face his past fears which is just the a manifestation of the techno, uh, techno organic virus that's on his arm so yeah, it's it's good. It's it's really good actually. But it's just the art lets it down in places. Next book I'm talking about is Black Panther number one or number one seventy three. I like that they still have the legacy number, and that's that's good. But <laughs> I'm going to start off with the things that I didn't like. First off, the cover. The, the, the cover is just a blatant rehash of something that's already happened, of something that, uh, of a cover that's already, that's already been, like two years ago. Um, the art's nice on the cover, I'm not saying that it's a, it's a bad cover, but it's like, if you're gonna, if you're gonna redo an iconic cover, and do something from a little further, uh, a little further than two, two years ago. But yeah, the the rest of the rest of the book is really good. the The art is the art is very like muddy, but it works. And there's a lot of there's a lot of motion in the art, and it needs to for being for this being such a action oriented issue. And the the art really does pop off the page. And it really, it really works for the kind of story that they're trying to tell. So basically, the the story to this is Black Panther's in space. Um, we don't really get any explanation to that. We're basically told, oh, the explanation will be in the next issue. Um, not sure if I'm a big fan of that, of like waiting to get explanation, but. You know, it's it's the way Tana Hisi Coates wants wants to tell his story. Let the man tell it how he wants. Um, but yeah, we basically have T'Challa or someone that we think is T'Challa, because he might not be. We basically have a guy who looks and acts like T'Challa, who has basically become a slave. In this like interga intergalactic empire of Wakanda, um, and he he basically 
every every day he tries to escape or he causes trouble or like it gets in a fight gets in a scuffle um but they can't but the, his captors can't kill him because he's property of the king and like that that's a that's a good idea uh, that this guy who's constantly causing trouble can't he's basically untouchable because he's owned by the king or the he's owned by the empire but essentially what we have is these these rebels um, led by led by this alien and two of the two of the rebels are Nakia and Mbaku. Um, I don't I don't get why Mbaku's there because I always thought that he was he was like the, a, a villain to Black Panther. I always thought that the man ape in the comics, unless if they changed it recently for the film, is I always thought that Mbaku was supposed to be like a a notable villain to Black Panther. But apparently here he's he's trying to help, which kind of kind of begs the question, are these actually you know, are these actually T'Challa, Nakia and Mbaku, or are they just like rand randies or random people that have just have just been um, picked and been given the names? Um it's really interesting and I'm glad that we don't get all of the answers because it still makes you like question everything. But the the thing that does kind of sell you that this is T'Challa is that he's seeing Storm in visions, basically saying, come back home. So I reckon that, that the, the person who gets named T'Challa at the end of this I reckon that that is T'Challa, but I, I'm not sure about the other two from the Rebellion. But yeah, I really liked this. Um, there's a lot to talk about with this, and there's a lot to speculate as well, and that's something that Ta-Nehisi Coates does really, uh, did really well in this. He, it's not a lot of world building, but it does, like, does present a lot of questions that I hope are answered before the end of the arc. Um, I hope that he stays in space for longer than just one, one story arc as well. I hope that he's in space for a while, because, eh, I also reckon that the story arc is going to go way longer than six issues. I, it definitely sets up to be like a, a big story arc. Um... And the final issue I'm going to be talking about is Hunt for Wolverine, Mystery and Madripoor, Issue 1. I enjoyed this a lot. Um, if my, own, if my only problem with this and my only gripe with all of the Hunt for Wolverine um, issues that I've been, I've been getting are that they... They do seem a little clickbaity, if, if that makes any sense. I know that might not make sense because it's a comic book, but it does seem like they're not really hunting for Wolverine. Um, like the first, the first couple pages are looking for Wolverine, but then it's just that's just set up for a storyline that's happening somewhere. That's just. That's the the hunt for Wolverine is basically just a like it's basically just something just like a, a plot device to get them to somewhere so that they can so they can do something there that it, it makes it makes more sense in my head I can't really formulate the sentence that well but. It, it, it does seem like the the whole Hunt for Wolverine banner that this whole event is falling under is is kind of just like half of the story and the rest of it is just the team dealing with a problem that happens where they are. So the only the only book that's really been hunting for Wolverine is the weapon lost, but that was just bringing the team together. We don't have much of a story there. 
with this we have a lot more of a story. Um, so the team, the team consisting of Psylocke, Domino, Jubilee, Storm, and Rogue, and Kitty Pride, who's not on, and Kitty Pride, who's not on the um, cover, but she's supposed to be the leader of the team, but she's not on the cover. Um, basically, this team goes to Madripoor because they all have, they all have something to do with. Wolverine, they're all connected to Wolverine. Friends, past lovers, past enemies. Um, I, 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 the only thing I'm wondering is, where's X-23 when all of this is going on? Yeah, the, the event's called Hunt for Wolverine. If there's anyone that they're going to want, uh, want to bring in, um, why, why has no one gone to Laura Kinney yet? Why has no one gone to X-23? I mean, she's, she's the clone of Wolverine, why not go to Wolverine's clone to find Wolverine? Yeah, it just doesn't make sense. But the art in this is gorgeous during a fight scene. During the action, it's gorgeous, but during, during like a, um, during an action sequence, it does feel very during something that's not an action sequence, like when they're all talking heads, it does seem very John Romita Jr. esque, where all of the all of the faces, all of the the faces specifically on the women, do look the same. Like the whole shape of the faces looks the same. Like it's all very like narrow, pointy chins. Like there's no there's no like differentiation of the faces of of them, but the the art during an action sequence is is just astounding and really works for a for a Wolverine title. Um, but yeah, so basically the uh, the team thinks that Magneto has something to do with the disappearance of Wolverine because. He's been acting shady, he's been, like, going back to his old ways, and I haven't read X-Men in a long time. I like, ever. <laughs> I haven't read read X-Men since, like, the beginning of Extraordinary X-Men. Uh, and that was, like, just after Secret Wars, like, two years ago. Two, three years ago. Um, but yeah. So, apparently Magneto is, like, going back to his more like villainous ways so the the team basically go to grill magneto but when they when they arrive they're not they're greeted by magneto at first they're told to go to this dinner but it's not magneto that shows up it's this psychic character called mind blast and she's on a team of kind of Females that are that are trying to uh, that are basically the opposite or that are like equal like they all have someone to counter one of the other um, characters like the only the only notable one there is uh, <coughs> the only notable one from the from this team of villains is Madame Viper. Or Madam Hydra, and you know they're a Madripoor. They're gonna they're gonna come up against Madam Madam Hydra. But yeah, I really enjoyed this. It was just fun, action packed. Um, a lot of a lot of stuff like not a lot really happens in this. Like it, it it's not really. It's just kind of. They they go to Madripoor and there's a bit of an action sequence, and like most of the team get captured. It's only Domino, it's only Domino, Kitty Pride, and Jubilee that make it out. And I like that it's them three that make it out because that in this issue they're the three that get the least amount of page time. Um. 
so those are all of the, those are all of the books that I am talking about this week. Um, I will see you guys on Thursday with another comic book haul video, and then on Sunday with the reviews. Uh, it might be it might be Saturday, it might be Sunday, it might be Monday. Um, I don't know, but uh, but yeah, I'll see you guys then. And have a good week. If you liked this video, give it a like, give it a subscribe, subscribe to this ugly mug, get the notifications by clicking the notification bell, and do all that lovely stuff. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.